Hey guys, Kovac here. Today I wanted to talk about Pogo Hat's mouse acceleration driver some more. Not just because it's awesome and deserves more attention, but also because there's actually a new version coming out. I've also changed the way that I use the driver quite a bit since I last made the video about mouse excel. I've added some more features to the graphic user interface that help make it easier to maintain muscle memory whenever you change the acceleration curve. And in general, uh, I'm still trying to hype this driver up. I really do think new, more people need to use this. Um, but before I jump into it, I really do want to warn everybody that Windows 8 has major issues with unsigned drivers. In order to use this, you would need to manually boot into test mode every time. Uh, Windows 7 is slightly less troublesome, but it still requires a bit of technical fiddling to get it to work. So there's a video out there to show how to install it in Windows 7. Uh, I can, I'll can i try to link to that if I remember. Anyway, uh, for those of you who have been taught that mouse acceleration is evil, I assure you that this is different. To date, I have never seen a mouse manufacturer give good options in mouse acceleration, and they're all painful to use in gaming. This driver gives you choices you've never seen before unless you're coming from Quake Live. The first part of this video is an explanation of what the driver settings do to your mouse input, followed by a brief section on the GUI options, and finally how I've been using the driver since the last time I posted the video on the topic. So. Driver settings. Um, we'll start here. Uh, first thing, you need to have driver enabled checked. So, I'm gonna save changes. You see this blue line at the top represents my sensitivity, and the uh, how high up is the sensitivity, and this is over how fast I'm moving it. Most people use a flat curve, no acceleration. That's pretty much standard. Uh, for people who use mouse acceleration, it's not a flat line. They do a variety of things, um, different drivers do different things, but uh, let me show you what these variables do. First off, sensitivity and prescale, I don't touch these. I leave them at one. The only reason you'd want to change these if you're actually trying to match somebody else's settings or you're trying to scale down your mouse's DPI. I don't uh, have any need for that, so I keep them at one. I never touch them. Uh, and if I want to lower the sensitivity, like right now, this is really high for me. I'm not used to barely moving my mouse, my hand to move the mouse like this. Um, I'm going to lower this to 0.6 on the post scale. This is how I prefer to change the sensitivity. So whenever I do that, it drops down to here. It's a little bit lower. Um, so next up, acceleration. This is what makes it not a flat curve. So I'm going to do 0.02. See, it goes up. So, the faster I move it, the further it goes. And people inherently seem to think they will not like this, but the reality is there's a wonderful thing sensitivity cap. So, you know what? Let me lower this further 0.4, and I'll set sensitivity cap to 1.5 times the post scale, is what this means. So, 0.4 goes up to just about 0 0.6. This scale that I have is not exactly 0 to 1, it's actually like 0 to 1.1 1 .1 or something, so it is from 0.4 to 0.6. I save, now it starts out lower, then it goes faster, and then it caps out. So at this point, it feels like a flat sensitivity curve with no excel if I'm going fast enough. It's very easy to control. Uh, so that's sensitivity cap. Speed cap is a new feature Povo Hat added. Uh, this was my request, and honestly, most people are not going to want this. Here's an example of what it does. Set it to 5. See how the sensitivity tanked? This is the fastest I can move the cursor. Why would you want to do that? Uh, there are certain games where there are certain speeds that you, if you move your mouse at uh, this rate, you get the most out of, uh, say, a jump, like in Quake 1 and Quake Live. I haven't really played with this in those games, but if you set it high enough, you can get, um, you can be moving and gaining speed exactly at the best possible rate. Still, you can't turn like this, so you, you feel like you're on a console. I don't recommend it for most people, but it's a neat feature there. Leave it at zero unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, so the offset. Offset is how long it takes along this axis before the acceleration kicks in. 
So I'm going to set it to 5. You'll see it stays flat for a little bit longer, then goes up, then goes back to being flat. So that means that for the slight movements like this, you're still going to be at a really low sensitivity, and then eventually it'll be at a, a moderate sensitivity again. And you can set it higher. You can go to 15, moves it further, and it stays at a lower sensitivity for a longer time. Lately, I've been using zero offset, but I'll get more into that later. Next is the power. Um, power has to be greater than one. Uh, at two, it is a straight line. At three, it's parabola curve, x squared. Four, it's stronger curve. Uh, at between one and two, it's like that. I don't really know why you'd want to use that, but options there. Um, I've preferred a linear curve, so power equals two. It's what I've been using for a very long time now. It's very easy to adjust to, in my opinion. So I've kept that at two. Prescales, like I said, I keep those at one unless you're trying to downscale DPI. Um, post scale, this is what you want to change for actually dropping your sensitivity. The X is left and right, Y is up and down. Angle snapping is also a new feature that Povo had added. So whenever you're drawing uh, circles in paint, pop this up here, circles. I can go like that, you don't see any interruption there. Let me set it to 15, see what happens. See how it straightens out a little bit earlier? Set it to 25. Get straight a little bit earlier. I can't really do the smooth circle over here. So angle snapping, what it does is if you're getting close to a straight line, it assumes you're actually trying to do a straight line and just goes with it. And then the angle is an actual adjustment of your mouse's input. Uh, so if you have a sensor where you move the mouse directly left and for some reason it goes slightly up, you can change this so that it corrects it. Um, now angle snapping, I don't think I'd really want to use this uh, unless I was playing a first person shooter that was really flat and I never had to do any angled tracking at somebody like this because that is kind of the exact situation where angle snapping would be bad. So I'm leaving it that, uh, that at zero myself. Anyway, um, so the GUI options. Uh, let's go to graphic settings, and you can see that it you can change the colors for whatever you've got here uh, for the current and the new curve. You can also change, or you can also display extra curves. So if I want to see what my Quake Live uh, sensitivity is, I can add it there. And it's pretty faint because I picked a bad color. Let me fix that. And we'll go with that. Now you can see it. So that's what my Quake Live sensitivity curve looks like right now. Um, and that's not active. That's just shown in the background for reference. And you can take that out. You can add any other profiles you have saved. And obviously you can open and save profiles here. Um, you can also manage the automatic profiles, so that means that if you have a profile for a game like Quake Live, you can make it run if it sees the Quake Live executable running, or you can set it to a hotkey, so if you press it, if you press this key, it'll change to that setting. Um, USB refresh rate. This is a, uh, a setting, you can change it, and it will actually affect what the graph looks like. So this number up here, 1000 hertz, means that that's what I've put in because that's what my mouse is running at. And if you change it to 125, the curve looks significantly different because the mouse driver actually does calculate it differently if you're running at a lower USB refresh rate. So I set it to 1000 because that's what my mouse is at. Um, this doesn't Changing this doesn't change how the driver feels for you but it does change the graph. So try to get it right so it's accurate. Uh, mouse DPI is purely for reference, just so you can have it up here if you ever take a screenshot or whatever. This, uh, this option chooses whether it's going to use the X values of pre-scale and post-scale or the Y values of these two. I leave it at the X just because left and right is more important than up and down for the most part. So now, 
these options are where it starts to get interesting. Lock, uh, you'll see these three. These top three are pretty much the same as the bottom three, but these are for post scale, these are for pre scale. So lock post scale Y to post scale X. Raise out this guy. Anytime you change this, updates that. So that's handy. That way you only have to update one and you don't have to worry about typing it in on both unless you are the type of person who uses a different vertical sensitivity for, uh, versus horizontal. Now, scale Excel with post scale X. This is a new setting. So let's take a look at the curve here. What we've got is a curve that goes up that fast and then caps out and goes there. Actually, let me turn sense cap on as well, sense cap scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this down to 0.3. And what it's going to do, it's going to change the sensitivity. Uh, I'm sorry, it'll change the acceleration and the sense cap. And what it did was it raised the acceleration and it changed the sense cap. So now you get it with the same slope. I found this is absolutely critical in maintaining muscle memory for whenever you're uh, playing around with acceleration settings. So if you keep this slope the same, you'll be able to adjust to new acceleration curves very quickly. And I found this is a huge benefit because if you uh, get used to something that has a little bit of acceleration but it starts pretty high, so say you're playing Natural Selection 2 and you're fighting skulks that are jumping around you, they're really close up, you can use a decently high starting sensitivity and play very well. And then you go to some realistic shooter where you need to aim at a far distance and you're, you, know, you might be zooming in, maybe you're not, but you're going to be fighting longer range like in Quake Live. So this you're going to be trying to track people accurately at this distance. You want to lower the sensitivity, but if you keep the slope the same, it's amazing how quickly you can adjust to it. So you gain the benefits of low sensitivity, you gain the benefits of high sensitivity, and you can track at a distance, you can get used to slight changes in mouse sensitivity. It's wonderful. Benefits of every world. Um, so the magic here, as I said, is these two options uh, checked. What this does is I change uh, post scale from 0.4 to 0.3, so it multiplies by the ratio of 0.4 to 0.3, and that's what the acceleration gets changed to. Same with the sense cap. That's why that's what it does to uh, get the get the same cap out here for the sense cap and get the same slope for the Excel. I love these settings; they're working out wonderfully for me. Um, so those are the new things that I've added, and then these options are the same, so if you, for whatever reason, are using Prescale, these will let you do the exact same thing. Uh, you can get those checked, and then go into here, and anytime you change Prescale, you'll get that stuff changed, it maintained the same sense cap, it maintained the same acceleration curve slope. So, anyway. Like I said, I leave Prescale at 1, but the options are there just in case you use them. Ah, so, I've touched on this a bit, but here's my current settings for sensitivity. What I'm doing is I have no offset, immediately the acceleration kicks in. If I'm moving my mouse across my mouse pad like this, that's probably 80 updates per second. I'm not really going that fast for the most part. Uh, whenever I do a flick like this, I'm realistically going maybe, hmm, maybe 50 or 60, possibly 65. I don't think much higher than that. You can test that by doing something like offset equals 50, uh, drop the post scale way down, so you get this curve like that, and then you set the acceleration way up. So. Now I try to move the mouse, and it's just, you have to go like this to actually get any real movement. So you can test and go, okay, well, 50, I'm having no problem hitting. Go to 70. Go back in the game. See that I can barely turn it if I'm trying to track like that. But if I do my flick, yeah, 70. We'll say 70 is just about what I'm hitting whenever I do my major flicks. So 
what that tells me is now let me just open up the profile rather than undoing what I did. What that tells me is that I want this sense cap to be hit before I'm at 70, because that's my flick. That's me trying to do my muscle memory of this is how far it takes me to turn. So that's good to know that if I'm up there before 70, I'm good. My muscle memory will still work. Um, so as a general note, I have a large mouse pad. As you can see here, it's about 17 and a half inches long by 14 inches tall or something. Uh, whenever I'm moving the mouse quickly, I've come to get used to about nine and a half inches to a 360. So if I go like that, that's about nine and a half inches. And whenever I set this to a flat curve at my sense cap and I pull out the ruler, it takes just about nine and a half inches. And that's a good number uh, for the for medium sensitivity. It's not too low. It's not too high, in my opinion. Um, and then I lower that from there. So you can see I've got my sense cap is just under two, which means that I'm hitting nine and a half inches here. So it's probably just shy of twenty inches of mouse pad, maybe nineteen inches here. If I'm going really slow. So I've got great precision going like this. And um, so what I've been doing, like I said, I go into the game. If I'm playing something that requires further distance tracking, I lower this down. Go like that, and I can play with it. Within, I'd say, 20 seconds at most, I'm actually used to this. Like, for example, I just changed that. You know, let me start higher. I'll do a quick demonstration here. So, 0.4. This is pretty high sensitivity for me. I'm not really used to this, but I'll get used to it pretty quickly. So, change quick live, full screen. Toss some bots in. Alright, I was shooting at the wall for a while, so. There we go. There's just something wonderful about being able to immediately change sensitivity and have this tracking. So, I have that, and then I'll change it to 0.25, which is a significant drop in sensitivity, but I'm still hitting my cap before I get to 70 there. So, go back in game, go to that, and refresh, uh, reset sensitivity. And again, this is a significant drop in sensitivity. I can feel it, but it's easy enough for me to adjust to. There's just something so intuitive about the linear curve at the same slope. I can't recommend it enough, and I wish that um, it was easier to install this driver so more people could try it out. But anyway, um, so that's what I've been using. And realistically, if I was going to be playing with this, I would bump it up to maybe 0.28. Let's try that. based on being able to track close range and also being able to track at long range like that. And again, if I was playing a game that's more close up, I just raise that starting sensitivity, muscle memory would be there in no time. So, thank you for watching, and um, hopefully you give this mouse acceleration driver a shot. I don't know when the new version will be coming out, there's a distinct possibility it will be out before I even release this video on YouTube. So if it's out, I will provide a link to it then, if not I'll add it as soon as I can. Thanks. Bye.